Welcome to Sakshi TV. I'm your host today, Gita Chopra. Today I have Pam Pollard. She is the Republican National Committee woman for Oklahoma and serves as the National Director of Coalitions for the Mighty American Strike Force. She has also served as the Oklahoma Republican Party State Chairman and President of the Oklahoma Federation of Republican Women. Pam's focus is on educating the public on political issues and organizing and training grassroots activists for conservative groups. Pam Pollard, welcome. Oh, glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. We're honored today. We're thrilled. So I, I want to get into some amazing questions with you. And, and again, just thank you for your time. We appreciate you coming out of your busy schedule to join us today. So with that, let's get into it. First, I just want to say congratulations on all your achievements. Just, just walk us through your bio. I know I gave you an introduction, but just, just briefly reiterate what I may have left out and what some important points are. Well, I think one of the most important things and probably, probably my favorite point to make is that I was just a small business owner, stay-at-home mom. We were helping to homeschool some of the grandkids and just busy with life. And a political candidate knocked on my door one day. I had never really talked politics, never been involved in politics, just, you know, a casual conversation around the dining room table. And after that one person coming and knocking on my door, he said, you need to be involved. Your voice matters. He said, do you, you know, would you like to come to a meeting? And I came to a meeting and that was like 20 years ago. And you know, that's how I got started. Just attended a meeting and, and now <laughs> look where it got me. So you are the president or, or the chairwoman of the Oklahoma Republican Committee. Is that correct? The Republican Party of Oklahoma. Yes. Okay. So the Republican Party of Oklahoma. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So yeah, that, that's definitely great. Now let's dive into the elections. Um, according to you, is Joe Biden going to be the president in January, sworn in? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. And I, I say that with all honesty. Um, if Joe Biden um, is successful in, in warding off these legal challenges that have merit, that are in the courts right now, then he may very well be president. And if he is president, I will you know, call him President Biden and respect the office. But there are some very serious legal challenges that are before the courts right now. So it's, it's a matter of, of fairness. It's a matter of uh, we're in the fourth quarter of the game, and, but the game's not over with yet. And there's been, we're here in Oklahoma, we love our football, we love our sports. There's been many games won in the final quarter when most of the fans have left the game because they thought it was over with. So I just say, let's, uh, let's finish this election. Let's finish these recounts. It is the closest election in history. So I think that it is fair to everyone that we make sure that it is um, fairly settled and completely settled so that mm -hmm. if he is the president, he is the president without any dispute. Okay, so you are an elected representative at the National Republican Party working under Ronna McDaniel. What are some of the plans at the Republican Party to support Donald Trump his, or his case for vo voter fraud at this time? Well, we are helping to do the investigative work behind the scenes. Um, as you know, it, this is a federal election, but elections in America are directed by all 50 states. Our federal government does not direct the states and how to carry out their elections. There are some minimum standards regarding the federal elections, but in these 50 states, there's 50 different processes, 50 different legal processes, as well as procedural. So we are having to depend on the lawyers to let us know. Uh, for instance, let's just take Georgia. Georgia is still in the news. In Georgia, you have to wait until after the vote is certified before you can file a legal challenge. In Nevada, you have to file a legal challenge before the vote is certified. So that's why we have had over 200 people on the ground in Nevada and have uncovered like 45,000, 45,000 documented uh, voters that was mailed ballots. And of those, almost 
21,000 have returned their ballots. So all of that discovery was done after the election and before the vote is certified, and that's why there's a legal challenge going on in Nevada. And again, as you know, Georgia vote was certified over the weekend. So now we have legal challenges that are just starting in Georgia. So the RNC is just providing the, uh, we call it the troops on the ground, the people that are helping to do the investigating on the ground. And uh, I talked with the RNC co-chair today and we all agree. Uh, we just wanna make sure this is a fair election and everyone that was eligible to, eligible to vote that their vote counted. And everyone that was not eligible, eligible to vote, their votes are not counted. That's all we're asking. So let's address those who voted for Joe Biden, to be fair. Can you outline the platform of the Republican Party and the platform of the Democratic Party to provide clarity to the viewers? Well, sure. There's, a, there's some major, major differences right now at this day and time between the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. And I'll just say, I am very proud of President Trump and some of the changes he has brought as the leader of the Republican Party. He's done a tremendous amount of outreach on social issues. He has had more women in high-ranking positions than anyone in the history of our country. Uh, as, as you know, uh, Kelly was the, Kellyanne Conway was the first female to be a campaign chairman of a presidential campaign, successful presidential campaign. So the president has done a lot for including women at high level positions. He's done a tremendous amount of outreach to the black community and to the Hispanic and the Cuban community, many minority communities to, um, and, and I think that the one reason he gained as many votes and earned as many votes as he got this year is because of that outreach to show people that every one of us that are registered voters in America, that means we're American citizens. We all have history in, in our background, but what we have currently is what unites us, and that is our loyalty to the United States of America. And in the United States of America, to me, that also means the united races, the united demographics of America. We are one. Let's start acting as one, treat each other as one. And I think that is the success of America. That's one thing that the Republicans are doing. The Democrat Party right now is focusing on, um, I was just reading their national platform, and the main topic that goes to their platform, there's two main topics that goes throughout their platform. I don't know if your viewers know, but as America is a Christian nation, the Democrat Party originally voted two different times to remove all reference of the word God in their platform. They wanted to just not even recognize God as our creator. Now, whether you're Christian, many other religions out there, most religions recognize that God is the creator of the earth. That's how far the Democrats have gotten away from general society. The second thing is that they are focused on reparations. I found 12 times in their platform talk about trying to bring uh, reparations, trying to uh, uh, try to bring equality of what has been hurt in the past to find a way to make it better uh, today. And, and all I'm saying is what we said earlier. We're the United States. Let's treat everybody equal, give everybody equal rights, fair grounds, level playing fields, and let the people that work the hardest, let them be the ones who succeed. Now, you said that the Democratic Party voted twice to get the word God out of, was that the Constitution you said? So their platform, the platform. Democratic okay. Party platform, on the third day after okay. it hit the news, there was a, a lot of backlash on the national media. This is documented. You can Google it and find it. But they went ahead and put the word back in it, but it's in there very, very, very seldom, recognizing God as our creator in America. That's a tragedy. So that's a tragedy, according to me. Tragedy. Well, I think it shows where the Democrats are now as far as, as their views of American society. Uh, you know, it, there's a, a lot of social issues that we can talk about, but when you get down to the foundation of our society, which is the belief in God, 
uh, and you don't want to stand on that basic foundation, that is a true dichotomy of, of the citizens of the United States of America. And I think that's why the Republican Party is growing so much in so many states. So what would you say about unity right now in our country? Because we're divided. So whoever wins the election or whoever takes the oath in January, half of the country is going to be angry. So either way, we're in a mental civil war. So how would you address this problem and how would you get Americans to unite again? What would you say as a leader? Well, and I think, I think your statement is very, very true. And it's, it's not anything that I'm happy about. It's not anything that I want to uh, try to, I don't want to try to minimize uh, the, the feelings of both sides, the people who may be empowered by thinking that uh, some of the policies of Donald Trump has has been uh, has been disavowed, and the new policies of Joe Biden. I think that uh, we need to talk truly about what is you know our country was founded on our United States Constitution. Okay. Let's look at the Bill of Rights. Let's look at our preamble, and let's focus on that. Let's unite behind our Constitution. Right, and we're we're just not united anymore. I mean, that that's where this is headed. Where we're getting polarized. So. This is something we need to go back. It sounds like you're saying go back to a grassroots foundation level and look at our constitution and look at what our founding fathers put in place in order to have unity today in the country. Okay, that's good advice. So, well, it brings unity, but it also brings something that has been here since uh, since we were formed. It's not anything new. So let's go back uh, to our basic foundations and let's build from there. So let's talk about voting patterns. So you mentioned something about erroneous thinking patterns of voters. Can you comment on that? What are some of those erroneous thinking patterns and who is committing them and how do we stop them? More talking about um, two things. I think some of it is long traditions and stereotypes mm -hmm. that are passed from generation to generation. And the second thing that is new it's been around for 10 years or more, but I think that this year, um, I think that four years ago, but especially this year, and that is the advent of the influence of social media. I think that is truly, truly changed. So America. social media, friend or foe? Both. So. Social media has allowed, um, just within side of, of those of us in the Oklahoma Republican Party, we have, uh, I'll just use one example, someone started what they call the drive for 45, and it's just cars and the trucks that put up the Trump flags, you've probably seen them on television, the Trump flags, and they just drive through these small towns in Oklahoma, uh, just showing their pride for and their support for President Trump. That Facebook group, in a matter of three weeks, grew from zero to 15,000 members of that group. 15,000. So with one post, we can reach 15,000 people who fervently support our president. That's great. By the same token, we have as many groups that are putting out absolutely proven, uh, I don't even want to call it fake news, let's call them what it is, and that's lies. On both sides of the issue, what bothers me the most, and that's why I put in my bio what, what my goal is, is to help educate people. There are a lot of people who aren't as plugged in as you and I are um, in, a, in a lot of these aspects. Uh, mm -hmm. So when they hear something, they take it at face value. And they don't know that they are flat out being made up out of thin air being lied to. That's deception. That's deception. And uh, I know that Facebook tried to crack down with their uh, their their truth seekers and and uh, uh, that but even even that was not true. Uh, they they uh, Blake, uh, USA Today wrote an article and mentioned me in it and said that I had spread fake news and they had tried to contact me multiple times and I refused to respond. I never heard from USA Today. I didn't even know that article had been written for three weeks until it popped up on a Google alert. So I think everybody, when we talk about personal responsibility as far as taking care of our families, we also need to have personal responsibility in the news that we read. And we cannot, we can no longer take things at face value. We need to do a little bit of research and educate our own selves. 
Yes, and I think it's not just social media, it's media. It started with social media, and thank you for, for bringing that up. It just started with the advent of social media, um, and I think that's what was so important four years ago with social media, and that's why social media tried to crack down this year because uh, President Trump was very masterful in getting his message out through social media. So this year, the, the, the difference, what made a tremendous amount of difference was the news media on every network channel, most of the most of the, the cable channels, every news that you would see and hear out there was they said that the articles were 90% negative. Even the headlines, if it was a positive story about the president, they would still do a negative headline because headlines are what are in the comment line. Headlines is what you come, what you find when you go to search for an article. If you search for an article on, I don't know, the White House Christmas tree. You, it will bring up a negative headline regarding probably what Melania wore that day or something. Fire, and you're definitely your passion, Pam, and, and I and I see it. And this is what what people are experiencing with the media. It's it's the media has become um, an enemy of the American people. And of course, that's our first con uh, first first amendment to the Constitution, freedom of press. But it has been abused and it has been misused. But again. It's up to the people to know the difference, to be educated and informed. And that's something I talked about with Dinesh D'Souza, and I usually do on all of my shows. It's inform yourselves, people. Be educated. Educate yourselves. Especially if you're an immigrant coming to the country, which leads into my next question. I appreciate the fact that you came from your, your I guess, generationally from an immigrant family from Ireland, I believe. And I want to talk to you about immigrants today because you're speaking largely to a South Asian audience. And these are people who predominantly vote left just based on the color of their skin. Let's call it what it is. Now, are they erroneously voting? And I want to ask you, in your opinion, does the Democratic Party do more for immigrants? I don't think the Democrat Party does more for immigrants. We have to remember the political parties do not set immigration policy. Our Congress sets immigration policy. Let's look at the immigration policies and what did they do under the eight years of Obama? How much, what did that do to make the, the streamline of the process for people wanting to immigrate to this country? I was having this discussion with someone today who just um, went to a naturalization ceremony. It took that person 15 years to become a legal immigrant in America. 15 years. My mother was uh, an, an immigrant from Ireland. She's the only one in her family to come to America. All the rest of my family, 100% of the family on my mother's side, are still citizens of Great Britain or, or the Republic of, of Ireland. Are you saying your parents were immigrants, not your grandparents? Correct. My mother. Okay. Yes, my mother is a naturalized citizen. Great to hear Correct. And I love to talk immigration policy because that's how my mom came. Just because I have blonde hair and blue eyes, back to our stereotypes we were talking about earlier, um, I am closer to first generation immigration policies than a lot of minorities are today. You're informed. So you're coming from an immigrant family who happens to be informed. So you took the onus upon yourself to educate yourself and not be brainwashed by the media. And I just think that that's what more people need to do. This is setting a, a model and example for society. Because unfortunately, a lot of immigrants who come to America don't practice that way. Well, that's right. And they're putting their heart. They are, what I see as immigrants, they are giving up their homeland to come to America because I've been to many immigration naturalization ceremonies and I see these people raise their right hand and declare loyalty to the United States of America. Now what that means to me is that not only are they declaring loyalty to the United States of America but they are denouncing their homeland. That means a lot. That means a lot. If I have to denounce my homeland, that means that something must be so much better. And essentially what's happening is that they're leaving of the very regime that they're trying to get away from and that unfortunately they're coming here and voting for the same party that practices all those policies. So in the example of India, they're running away from state, uh, sorry, state controlled banks state-controlled schools. They're coming here and asking, where's the private schools? Where's the private banks? How do we privatize? How do we not look for a job? How do we create one? 
and they're, they're voting for the party that's socialist in nature and orientation that's not fiscally conservative so in my mind i would say that's an erroneous voting pattern and i like how you just added to the story where you said you are you are an immigrant coming from an immigrant family you might not be but just because you look a certain way, you know, you don't vote a certain way. And it's really about understanding what the policy platforms are. And unfortunately, I think that's a large reason why we have a civil war in America today, because half of the people simply don't know what's going on. They're voting the way their forefathers did. This is a generational curse, if you will. I like to tell people that and, and I'm a big family person. I'm a stepmom of six. We've got 14 grandkids. So family means everything to me. Doesn't At the end of the day, I can leave going to the White House aside. I can leave talking to the governor aside. And I come home to my family. When times get tough, I'm with my family. When times are the best, I'm with my family. So I tell people, look at your family and look at which political party does the most to unite your family, bring your family together, and promotes the family values that will help your family succeed in America. That party, the party of the families, is the Republican Party. The Democrat Party, as I said, I read their platform. It's about reparations. It's about me telling you that your forefathers were treated badly Therefore, we need to find a way to make you feel equal in today's society. The story of Lazarus in the Bible where, where Jesus said, take off your grave clothes to Lazarus and get up and, and walk, come back to life. And if they're not, you know, if certain groups of people are not going to take off grave clothes, we're going to be living in the past. And like you said, we're going to be making reparations forever. And we're not going to move on. We're not going to be unified as a society. And that's the end of it. You can't have it both ways. Either you want to move on or you don't. And I'm not attempting to understand the pain that people have experienced. Right. Again, you know, I'm not minimizing it. I'm not denying it happened. But I am saying that we do have to do something about it. And, and, and also the people who this happened to have to also have to make a decision to want to move on. It's kind of like when you get, get out of a relationship or people who get divorced, you have to make a decision and say, you know what, I'm going to heal now, regardless of what they did to me or what he did or my ex. So it's, it's a similar thing when you look at it as a larger group of people. And again, I'm not attempting to understand or minimize people's pain, but we've got to take off our grave clothes. We've got to become one. I like what you said in the beginning of the interview, that we are one. We are the same. It doesn't matter that our skin color is different. And it is. Your skin color is different than mine, but we are all Americans. And either we're going to be patriotic or we're not. Because if we're not, we can keep coming up with excuses of why we're not going to be. Or we can keep coming up with reasons why we are and why we should be and why we will be. So I really think the fate of the United States rests with the people. The choice is ours. And it's, it's the choices for you, my friend, whoever's watching this, this program. The thing that's, that's been on my heart quite a bit, and I remember I learned this when I was in the sixth grade. And I've never forgotten it. And I may not say it 100% perfect, but nearly from the sixth grade. So that's been many decades ago. I'll just say that. And that is the preamble to our Constitution. Are you familiar with the preamble to the Constitution of the United States of America? This is the preamble. We, the people of the United States of America, in order to form a more perfect union, that's our preamble. This is what we're formed for. We establish justice, and we can talk forever on that one. Establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. That is the preamble of our Constitution. You want to know, talk to me about what, what do we need to do to bring us together? We need to unite amongst, around our preamble. Establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and ensure domestic tranquility for ourselves and our posterity. That's the recipe for success because that's what our forefathers of, of all the, 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 the history that they brought to our founding fathers and our constitutional convention and the years that they discussed what would be the best form of government for this free world, a new opportunity 
remember America was one of the America was one of the last countries, major countries formed on this planet. There have been many, many governments. That's why I say let's get back to our founding document. Let's look to our founding fathers. Let's look to our constitution. Let's look to our preamble. And let's look at our declaration of independence of why we separated and why we formed this perfect union of 50 states. I agree. And, you know, it's up to us again for the future. It's, it's, it's going to be if we unite, that, that's our strength because we are the breadbasket of the world. And we're not setting a good example right now to the world. And in some ways, we've become the laughing stock of the world. And other countries may even take advantage, like, you know, Far East might take advantage of us, especially during this tumultuous transition of the presidency. So we really need to get it together. And again, it's, it's not even about bashing each other sides or even calling them the other side, but it's really, like you said, I like it. It, just, it goes back to basics. Let's read the Constitution. Let's, let's vote correctly. Let's be informed. Let's be respectful. Let's stop the violence. So, you know, these, right. these are all the radical things, the domestic terrorism, all of this has to go, you know, in the name of God. And it goes back to that. We have a greater power. We have a higher power than ourselves. And it's about being humble submitting, surrendering. And exactly what you're saying, I think, you know, when we, when you, if we ask the question, what do you see? I'm talking about my own personal opinion. What do I see as, as the greatest destruction to America? People quit going to church. There are, this is the fewest number in history of the United States. Fewest number. They're saying that only 20% of people say that they go to church regularly. Therefore, uh, when there when there is no uh, when there is no laws, then you have chaos. That's where we are, people. We have the foundation of God, of our Constitution, and of our biblical principles. People have not only turned them away; they have they have completely uh, said that they are um, uh, not legal and not relevant in American society today. <laughs> They've challenged them, and they've also distorted the meaning. I've seen a lot of the churches take scripture and just take it out of context to support the party who they're voting for, and basic or just eradicated it altogether. Like you said, you want to take God out of the equation, right? Ego, edge God out, E-G-O. Ego, right, right. Well, and that, that's where we are, let's face it, and I'm not going to blame a certain party, but, you know, no. the proof is in the pudding, and then there's certain radicals, radicalization that's taking place, and it's, it's all about you know, me, 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 it's a selfie generation and about, I'm right, it's about me, I can do it, I don't need God. So whatever, whoever that resonates with, it does. But again, this is something that, you know, I like your answer. When we take God out of the equation, that, that's the beginning of failure. And that is what's happening in our country. So Pam, any last words for restoring unity back in the United States, regardless of who takes oath in January, whether it's Joe Biden or President Donald Trump, what do you say to the American people for peace and even to have a happy holiday season coming up? Well, I think this is the perfect time for a, for a topic like this. Because uh, in America, next week, or this, this week, isn't it? This week, we are celebrating what Americans call Thanksgiving. And the reason this holiday was created is because people, as you said, people left foreign countries and came to this new world this new country and created this, this freedom to, to create anything they wanted to. And they chose this form of government. And the form of government that we have in America has created in our very short amount of time has created the most powerful, the richest, the, 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 the greatest natural resources, the greatest human resources of any civilization in the world. That's why the world looks to America. And as you said earlier, that's why, you know, we hate that the rest of the world is laughing at what America has become now. So on this season of Thanksgiving and of our Christian Christmas holiday coming up, let's remember what we were founded by, what we were founded for, and what we were founded with. Remember, we were founded with multiple religions coming together together centering around one basic precept and that's freedom and my freedom in my heart allows me to accept your right to have your freedom as well we have rioting in america because people won't allow me to have the freedom to do what i think is right for me and that is bullying 
political bullying and the whole world is focused on bullying right now. We need to be focused on political bullying. It has no place in society, has no place with our children, has no place in our schools, has no place in our government, but does have a place. We're going to humble ourselves before the almighty God and, and, and what Christ taught as one of the most important teachings of the Bible. What we all know is the golden rule. Love thy neighbor as thyself and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Let's get back to that simple basic rule. And I think we'll be able to, to get along and work for the unification of America. Amen. <laughs> and I just want to add what Jesus said, uh, which is inspiring as well. Love covers all offenses. So viewers, it's, it's really about loving our neighbor, especially at this time. If somebody is from an opposite political party as you, have coffee with them. Talk to them. Maybe look past that. And, and just it goes back to love. And, you know, this is what we need to do as leaders, whether we're in church, whether we hold political office. But we are leaders. So we, we need to set a good example, especially to the younger generation. All right, Pam Pollard, thank you for today. Viewers, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe to me on YouTube, Gita Chopra, to catch me for my next episode on the U.S. election coverage. Thank you.